Chrysler Magazine's Marshall Pruitt. We are back for another GTP 101 tech tour. I'm going to give you the low level on brake by wire and brake mapping. Hey there, Philippe Albuquerque. This is something really new and really interesting for GTP and a normal DPI, the former generation prototype. We have standard hydraulic braking. Step on the brake pedal, hydraulic fluid gets pushed out to the four calipers, those clamp onto the discs, the car slows down. There's a brake bias adjuster that can move that pressure to the front, to the back, whatever the driver wants to get the balance right. With brake by wire, and now we have these new brake mapping settings that drivers can use on the steering wheel, there's electronic intervention that actually takes pressure off of the rear when the motor generator unit, the MGU, is harvesting energy for this new hybrid GTP package. It's a mind-bending thing, but yes, there are electronics actively adjusting how much pressure goes to the rear brakes as not to have the MGU, when it fires up and harvests and slows the car down, have the rear brakes lock and then the driver lose control. So brake by wire, brake mapping, which is driver adjustable, phenomenal stuff. That's the low level explanation. Let's get going with our friends from Honda Performance Development here on racer.com. Hello Marshall and ho hello the world of racer people. This is Dave Salters, President of HBD and Technical Director, so your friendly Prezi from HBD. And here we have Addy. Hi everyone, my name is Adi Susilo. I am uh, with HPD. I look after the performance application uh, and uh, we're here to talk about our new race car. So we are going to tell you a bit about brake by wire systems on our beautiful new baby. So this is our ARX 06 LMDH funky race car and it's got all sorts of funky stuff that does weird things sometimes for braking and all that sort of stuff so we're going to explain it because it's all brake by wire and um, all that sort of stuff so i'm going to ask addy questions and he's going to explain it sort of stuff so brake by wire in the old days right i don't know if they were good in the old days <laughs> um someone pressed the brakes and hopefully the car stopped so that was more or less it. Someone pressed the brakes, hydraulic fluid moved around, squeezed some pistons, squeezed some brakes, and they weren't carbon then, but now they're carbon, they're all drilled, and they cool each other, and they glow red hot, and all that sort of stuff. But now, Addy, yeah. what happens when you press the brakes? Yeah, like, like Dave said, like in, in the past, we, we set up all the mechanical bits of, of the braking system uh, to translate what the driver wants when, when he or she uh, presses the, uh, the brake pedal, but nowadays everything is electronically controlled, as, as it implies brake by wire. Uh, the driver still presses on a brake pedal, but what happens is the brake pedal sensor will then tell an intelligent uh, box uh, that tells our system what that means. And what that means is, uh, is a deceleration. And, um, and that's where it gets interesting, like uh, the driver will will want a certain deceleration, the sensor tells us what that is, and then the various systems inside this car will try to make it happen. So presses the brakes, there's a whole load of electrical stuff, and then what happens now is the computer needs to find out how to distribute the brakes between the front and the back, and there's issues. So let's say he wants so much braking on the front and so much on the back, or she, he or she. Um, there's other stuff that can be happening at the back of the car now. Correct. So there's an electrical motor that is trying now to recover have, energy when exactly. you're braking. We have so how does he motor. figure it out? Because what could happen, he's pressed the brakes, you're braking, and then all of a sudden a bit of the computer says, start giving me electrical energy. That could really upset. He's committed, he's on the raggedy edge, he's about to lose the back of the car and some bloody electrical motor switches on and makes him spin, so he's not going to be happy. Yeah. So how do we deal with that? So that's a good point. Uh, in the past, I would say, we, when we brake, we have the brakes to deal with. But now we have more than just the brakes, we have the electric, electric motor to deal with. We can brake with the, with the motor and with the, with the brake calipers. And someone needs to decide how much with this and how much with the other. And allegedly the driver who's paid too much says he's busy. So he yeah. can't decide. <laughs> so who decides? So 
Yeah, so there is a... There's Don't a tell system. the drivers that, by the way. <laughs> so there's a system inside that, uh, that, that arbitrates this, this request that, that takes the, uh, the demand or the, the desired deceleration profile and first actually asks the other systems, how much can you give me? How much, how much braking force can you give me? How much deceleration can you, break, can you give me? And that's from the brakes, the mechanical brakes themselves, and also from the electric motor. And that depends on the, um, for instance, the state of charge of the battery. If the battery is full, the electric motor has nowhere to go to store the, the energy. So then the electric motor will say, nope, brake caliper is going to have to do it. So to do all that, Basically, we had to invent all that software at HPD, didn't we? So we started with a oh, yes. clean piece of ECU, <laughs> yes. and we wrote our own software with Mr. or Mrs. Arbitrator yes. that had a set of rules, and that decided, like, okay, I'm going to start braking on the back, and I need so much torque, so much deceleration, and then... It needed to decide whether the motor's on or off and how much torque the motor is doing or what, how full the battery is at charge. Right. And that has a set of rules that it figures it out. Yep. So basically, the driver always gets the same thing. Yes. Because that's the key. Yes. Drivers get grumpy if they don't get the same thing. And yes. so would you at 200 miles an hour and you're heading for a wall. You really want the same thing and right. you can't blame them really. Yep. So, okay. Exactly, and that's, that's actually the beauty of this brake by wire system is now the driver can can uh, give the system a profile. It, it can have a, a linear braking uh, profile. It can do something non-linear if he or she wants to. Yeah. Um, and the and the systems will figure out how to how to do that. And um, yeah, like 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 uh, Dave said before, this situational awareness of who's able to do that to do the braking, how much and uh, where, that is done all over the, the track. It's done all the time. So the, the ECU will try to, to do this computing real time. So the ECU has situational awareness. Situational awareness. What well, a good set of words, that is. <laughs> so, so. Sounds like Skynet's becoming more yeah. aware. Yeah. Where the movie Terminator yeah. <laughs> What's today's date? It may go live today. Exactly. No, yeah. so it, it juggles. Yeah. It's a juggler. It's a juggler. It's trying to help the driver. Yeah. And we can... We can write it and we use the electric motor to help the brakes, to generate energy, we have to see what's in the battery because then it has a set of rules. And of course there's the engine there as well, so when you, when you lift off, the engine has a certain braking profile because you're motoring it. So we have to take that into account as well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, the engine is still the engine, it still either, either uh, provides no torque or friction torque or provides torque whereas the MGU can do both it can yeah. do positive torque negative torque so yeah. balancing these two actors yeah. together like you said juggler juggling these two together to give the driver what uh, what what they want is exactly what the what the situational awareness system is doing cool okay so here's another question Abby. so We've got all this situational awareness, smartness, ECU, ways of confusing ourselves, all that sort of stuff, in this beautiful racing car. And we're looking at some rear brakes at the moment. So that's where all the action is. Right. So we've got rear brakes here. Hello, rear brakes. We've got a motor buried in that bell housing. It's hiding. It's shy. So uh, it won't come out at the moment. Hopefully, if it comes out of there, we're in trouble. So we've got a motor in there, and we've got a beautiful racing internal combustion engine, and we can tell people about that, how we package it another day. But, okay, rear brakes, here we go. Yeah. Driver presses his pedal, yeah. he wants the same thing on the rear brakes, but we can change it. Exactly. So, so driver, driver wants a profile, driver wants something from the brakes, and then we have, we have smart people within HPD that tells us what the, the driver profile means for us engineers, nerdy engineers in torque. Yeah. So then once we have the torque profile, now we, now we, uh, we talk with our, our software to see, okay, if, I, if we want to, to give that torque to the driver, who's going to do, who's going to take on that? Is it, is it going to be 50% the, the mechanical brakes, the calipers, and 50% the electrical uh, motor, or is it different? And uh, it depends on a lot of things. For instance, what happens 
when the calipers get hot, when the, when the rotors get hot, when the brakes, brake temperatures get, uh, get too high. Uh, that can happen before the request is, is, is made or during the braking. And the, uh, the ECU will have enough knowledge to deal with that and start shifting, yeah. shifting the uh, request from one point to another. So that's, that's a key point here. So here you have a lovely carbon rotor. If, if people see race cars, they will see sometimes that thing is bright red. So if you come and watch Daytona, middle of the night, Addy will buy you a coffee. The, um, that's a lot. The, um, you'll see that thing is bright red. But sometimes it's bright red at the start, at the end of the braking zone is bright red, at the start it's not so red. But that friction is changing with temperature. So again, now that we are moving the braking torque between that and the motor, we need to know how much torque is there. So we need to know its temperature and what they call its mu, its coefficient of friction. And its coefficient of friction changes with temperature. So we have to have done some tests to map that out. And again, the situational wear ECU has got a really good memory, unlike me, and it can remember that stuff, and then it can do loads of sums by the smart people to figure out, I'm this hot, I got this much friction, and I'm pressing this hard, so I must have this, this much torque. And then, well, that's a lot for me to get, so get the motor to do some more or some less, or, right. and we write all those rules in the ECU, basically. Right. And in theory. <laughs> so. And see.